Welcome, scholars, to our chapel worship. Our theme this year is Speak, O Lord, and today we let our God speak to us to show us how to respect. Reminder for our worship, please participate. Speak out loud. Adults, if you're with your scholars as they watch this chapel, please join in with them and participate and worship our God. Grace to you, Hope Scholars. Grace to you, Pastor Steinberg. We begin... In the, we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Please fold your hands and read this prayer with me. Dear faithful Lord, we thank you for our authorities and this school. Open our hearts to learn about your word. Open our minds to learn about your world. Lead us to be bright lights in our school, in our cars and buses, and at home. Amen? Amen. Let's say our key Bible passage. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. Psalm 145, verse 13. This week we've been looking at the virtue of respect, God's power for you to honor him and others. And this week we have not done it all the time, not perfectly. So we confess knowing we get to hear the good news of forgiveness in Jesus. Please join me. Dear God, I am sinful. I do not always show respect. I deserve only your punishment. Forgive my sin because of Jesus. God loves you and forgives you because of Jesus. Jesus died to pay for your sin of disrespect. He was perfectly respectful in your place. As God's children, he now gives you power to live for him. Amen? Amen. God's message for you today is that it takes God's power to respect those who may not deserve it. Our story this week is David and Absalom. Just a messy, icky, terrible story. Just a family blown up with problems and disrespect and nothing looks too good, but we see that despite all that sin, God still found a way to keep his family and people going, keep the promise of Jesus going, and ultimately eternally heal his people. Respect is God's power for you to honor him and others and David didn't always do a good job, and Absalom didn't always do a good job. And we see it just end in disaster. But again, we rejoice that Jesus can help us out of a disaster of disrespect in this world, even in our own family, and lead us to a heavenly home where we have perfect respect with our God, with all our brothers and sisters. Here's a picture of my family. You can see, if you count them all up, this is actually from about 10 years ago. If you count them all up, there's 11 of them, plus my dog. We all lived in one household. Maybe you have that many people in your household. Maybe you don't have as many. But when you live with people, you can struggle with respecting them. I had my in-laws living with us to honor and respect. They might have a different idea about what should be done in the house. Or to honor and respect my wife or my kids, and for them to respect me, it's kind of tough. You can't always do it. With your family, it's the greatest opportunity to show love and respect, or it can be the biggest problem. And that's what we see in our story with David this week. He had a big family, not put together the way God wanted a family to be put together, and it caused some issues. We saw with his sin with, with Bathsheba that God said, now there's going to be problems to the prophet Nathan. You're going to have struggle and hardship in your family, and this is how it came true. You see, one of his sons, one of David's sons, Absalom, had a bunch of issues with David, and he had a hard time respecting him. He wasn't that respectable. He had a Bathsheba scandal. So Absalom's mom, David, had cheated on her. David had disrespected Absalom's sister. Another terrible story. And David was old, and sometimes it's easy to disrespect old people. Maybe you felt that way, man. They've done something to me that disrespected me. They're old. I don't need to respect them. I don't know them. But God calls us to respect the people that don't always deserve respect. Was Pontius Pilate respectable?
God's message for you today is that it takes God's power to respect those who may not deserve it. Our story this week is David and Absalom. All kinds of problems in this messed up total family. David had built a family not the way God wanted it to be built, just like Jacob had done. And there was a big mess. David had sinned with Bathsheba, and that caused all these problems. And the prophet Nathan had said, Now there's going to be struggles and disaster and a sword in your family. And this is where it comes true. David didn't look that great, and Absalom was even worse when it came to disrespect. Respect is God's power for you to honor him and others. And Absalom didn't honor his father David, not even close. And maybe Absalom thought he had some reasons to disrespect David. Now here's my family. This is from about 10 years ago when there were 11 of us in, in our household. You can see there's my in-laws are there and my, my wife's grandmother lived with us and our dog and, and my six kids and my wife. And whenever you live with your family, it can be the greatest source of a blessing or they can be the biggest struggle. Even though my family just is awesome, we still struggle from time to time to respect one another. For me to honor my in-laws, uh, to take care of my wife's grandmother, even though she took a lot of work, for my kids to respect me and their grandparents, and to do all that, we didn't do it perfectly. In your family, maybe you have situations like that. Maybe you have a big family or a little one, and maybe you struggle to love one another and respect each other. It's true. A family, all they can give you the greatest blessing or they'll be the biggest struggle. Jesus is the one who can help us respect and love one another even when they're not acting the best. And we see this in our Savior Jesus and we see it not happen so well in our story. See, King David, was he really someone that was respectable? Absalom didn't think so. David had some pretty big flaws. He had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Absalom's mom? That one of David's wives, and then David cheated on her? Oh, that could lead to disrespect. Uh, Absalom had a sister, and David kind of let one of his sons just do some evil things. He felt disrespected. Absalom even left for a while and came back. It was a struggle the whole time. And David by now was getting old, and sometimes for young people, they go, oh, what's that old guy? He doesn't know anything. He's just old, and you just don't feel like respecting. But God doesn't call us to respect people when they're nice to us, when they're perfect, only if they're perfect. He calls us to be like him and respect either's, others even when they're not that respectable. Pontius Pilate, the authority that looked over Jesus' trial, was he respectable? Well, he was a foreigner. He was a pagan. He wasn't a, a, a Jewish person like Jesus, so he's one of those guys. Jesus could have used that as a reason to disrespect him. Or, well, he was an evil, vicious, unjust punisher. He knew Jesus was innocent and yet still went along and asked to have him crucified. And ultimately, Pilate condemned Jesus. But yet, Jesus the whole time perfectly respected him and honored him with his words and and followed his instructions. Jesus never did anything to disrespect him, even though he was a terrible leader. That's what Jesus did in our place. And he also calls us to follow him and be like that. So this world gives us advice for some people that are jerks and don't listen to us, but Jesus gives us different advice. This world says, someone disrespects you, disrespect them back. In fact, it's, it says, now you can spread the disrespect. Tell people how awful they are. Maybe you can even overcome them by being even meaner than they are. You can trash talk them and win the battle. That's what the world says. But Jesus says, someone disrespects you, respect them anyway. Respect them first. Love goes first. Even defend them to others. When people want to pile on, you don't take it out of control. Say, hey, give them the benefit of the doubt. That's tough. Finally, you are so respectful and so loving, you, all, you confuse them and really overcome them with your love and respect, and people see Jesus in what you do by being just like Jesus, who respected those who didn't necessarily deserve his respect. Dr. Martin Luther King got it. Here's a quote. People know the second part, but maybe not the first part. Let me read it. Returning hate for hate multiplies hate adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. MLK knew that if you know, you're going to throw disrespect at disrespect, it just makes it worse. And he says things are kind of almost devoid of stars. There's hardly any light out there at all. We can't be part of the problem that covers up the light. And that's tough. 
That's a challenge he followed. It costs us a lot, but that's following Jesus. And as forgiven child of God, he calls us to do that. Because the power to do this comes from where? From Jesus? And say it with me. Jesus died for me. Amen. That's the power. That's the power to respect others who don't deserve our respect. So what do we learn from this story? Well, our family can be the biggest blessing or the biggest curse. That's the reality. Followers of Jesus strive to respect others to win them over. The struggle of respect is painful in this world and a source of sadness. Sad story. This life often is sad. And finally, Jesus gives us an eternal home free of disrespect. So if you know that you haven't always respected others, but that Jesus forgives you, and that you can respect God first and other authorities next, let me hear you say, Amen. Amen indeed. Join with me in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16. Fold your hands and please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, you are awesome and wonderful. We praise you for having all authority. Forgive us for all the times we haven't respected you or those you've put in authority over us. Lord, forgive our sins because of Jesus and help us show respect to even those who don't deserve it. Help us win them over and show you by what we do. Watch over us. Watch over our school and our families. Keep us safe and healthy. Give us blessings and watch over our nation. We pray for there to be uh, a, collective, um, a collective spirit of respect amongst our community and our family and friends. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God is faithful. The Lord is is faithful. Fold your hands again and join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing from our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for worshiping with me. Keep praying to our God every day and taking in his word whenever you can.